Let's talk about the emergency numbers. And I want to put you on the spot, Roland. What is the fast service emergency number? Yeah, I got to have, Roland, not I got a to sentence. Have, I got to have great education about it as a result of that because of my deep knowledge on it. I'm not saying. Please, if you know the ah, emergency number. No, 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 no. No. What is the emergency number? If you number? know the emergency number, Roland, please let us know because Roland, we know and we want to. No, we don't educate know. I'm us. asking you. What's uh, we the have number? to take a break. No. I know. Listen, here's what we're going to do. In the next one minute, give me a call. 0302 <laughs> One or two. Tell me if you was any emergency. This was, lady wants to disgrace me, but I know the number. Though, there was fire. You know, if you see fire somewhere, what are the numbers Charlie, that you call? Give me it? a call. Is it one zero three zero two two one one six nine one or two? If you're in Cape Coast, what number would you call? Yeah. If you're in the Western Region, what, what number, number would you call? call? If you're in the Volta Region, what number would you call? If you're in anywhere up north, what number would you call? What's the emergency number? You're in Accra. <laughs> Is it so easy? <laughs> Please number? give us a call. Uh, Let us know whether you know the emergency number. We know. Okay, here's what we're going to do. <laughs> Maxwell Agwagwa hits the streets, and this is what he found. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. But I know it's fire service, but I don't know the number. You don't know the number? Too? No, no, no. Oh, okay. Uh, since I'm a new number, I'm a friend here. But, and I just said, police for on a friend. You're a police for on one of the No, okay. I'm a friend, a fire service for. And you're from one number, Ben. I'm a number, no, so, okay, my name is here, dear. But and yet, sir, my name will be a honour, and I'm a friend. I'm a bona man, yeah. Says, Thank you. Well, he says he would um, call um, the police, uh, or if he doesn't have the contact to the police, he will call somebody at the Ghana National Fire Service um, to come and help douse the flames. He doesn't know the number, um, the emergency line to call for the Ghana um, um, Fire Service. Just call the, the, the fire service. Yeah, I yeah. yeah, that's, um, um, is it uh, 191 or something? Yeah, yeah. In fact, the number is uh, 191. The number I'm supposed to call. Okay. Uh, well, would, you, would you call in case there's uh, fire? Oh, in case there is fire, I'll call. I'll call and then the fire will come and help us. Uh, numerous. They are numerous. Uh, what number are you going to call? Hmm. Which one do you know? Uh, is it the uh, 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 the fire service or um, I'll call the fire service first? Yeah, well, but what number would you call? <laughs> one ninety two. <laughs> one ninety two. One ninety two. <laughs> fire service. One nine nine two. I'll call one nine one. I should trust. <laughs> I don't have any choice. I should trust. So. I don't have any other choice. That is what is given, so I'm trusting they will come. Line call. Um, let's say I'll call 1900. Okay. Uh, that one, what number is that? I think. Um, it's not a um, police number. You call the police to come and put off, to come and douse the flames. I have to call the fire service, but if I don't have their number, when I call them, they'll give me their number to call them. Okay, 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 okay. So you call the police so that they'll get, um, you call the fire service to come and help you? Yes. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, so please make sure that uh, you, make sure know that you know the emergency number. Oh, by Okay, <laughs> but I wanted Maxwell to ask, the person who said he wanted to call the police, what, what's the police number? The police number is very easy. Uh -huh. I know. Uh -huh. 1855. Okay, that's just one of, <laughs> one, one of our one. three that I think I know. So what's the other one? And the regular one that we always call. Which is? Call. <laughs> but we've been interacting with the no, not yet. deputy not director yet. Wait, wait, of wait. the no. Ghana National. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. Are you okay? I'm he's okay. actually, he's no deputy. Yeah, uh, he, he is the spokesperson of the National Party. So he is the substantive. Okay. Okay. But he's joining us real quick. Before we bring that conversation you had with him, uh, Mr. Prince Billy Anaglate, good morning to you. Yeah, good morning. Thank you for your time. Please take us out of our misery. Roland, you won't believe it. He had a chat with you this morning, but he has <laughs> yeah, exactly. no idea if he spotted any fire somewhere. 
He has no idea what She's numbers lying. to call. So please help us out. <laughs> As Roland, one, is, uh -huh. is, Roland is one of the many Ghanaians who do not take it interest in knowing the fire service. I know now. the number. Should I mention it for you? Of course, I'll be glad. 191. <laughs> Roland, mention it. 191. Oh, Roland. <laughs> well, it's all right. 191 is not for fire service. That one is for the police. Roland. Oh, I thought it was for emergency. <laughs> Tell I'm going that upset. one is for the police. The this one reminds me of the kebab. 192. 192 is for the fire service. 191 is for the police. And 193 is for the ambulance. Mm. Oh, when did you start using that no, one? No, 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 no. It's been like know. this. Oh. Please. Just say Roland, thank you. are you trying Just to defend you. yourself? <laughs> 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 Mr. Naglate, uh, 192, but are there any other numbers? I remember there was uh, a certain number that was supposed to be universal so that they would just pipe through to fire service if it had to do with you or police or not more or that sort of thing. Do we still have this number in existence? Yes, the 211 is still there. The 211 is still there, but then uh, the, the, the peculiar ones to uh, all the agencies are what I just mentioned with the fire service 192, the, the police 191, ambulance 193. Okay. And with the fire service, you can also get another emergency number which is 0302-772-446. Okay. These are the emergency numbers that uh, we, we have at our fire master control. Unfortunately, people do not uh, seriously uh, adhere to this. Mm -hmm. they, they, they will call 999. I want to say it here again that 999 is on the fire service. Uh, number okay. 999 will terminate at PNT, but that is the number that a lot of people begin to mm. call and they say they are calling the fire service and they are not getting the fire service. Okay, uh, um, if, you, if you give me the opportunity, maybe probably I can even mention some of the regional uh, 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 numbers, the regional fire service, regional numbers that can also be. Uh, used to access them in case there is any emergency. At those is places. that to that is, say that if you're in Cape Coast, you can't call 192? You can call 192, but I'm only saying that, yes, you can call 192, but in case the 192 is in case or is not going, they mm -hmm. also have their other regional numbers that mm -hmm. you can search for. 192 is universal uh, okay. to all the, the, the fire stations. But okay. um, I'm saying in case you are not able to access the 192, then okay. probably you can call some other regional numbers, that is, you have the time. Okay. So, Mr. Naga, this is what we're going to do. After the show, I'm going to call you. I'll take all the numbers. We'll do a nice table with the regions and the emergency numbers, and then we can share it tomorrow on the show. That will be very good for us. Okay. 192. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Prince Villian Aglati. <laughs> Uh, Thank he, you. Thank you for the opportunity. All right. Oh, it's okay. for the National Fire Service. Are you okay now? We're still talking about breast cancer. Okay, so the, num <laughs> the, the number that he gave, 0302 uh, <laughs> That's uh, the other number that he gave alongside the 192 and the 211, 0302-772-446. One of the things that I've also done, because I remember, was it uh, Mr. Seifas Arthur we spoke to here on the show? Also, uh, we touched on emergency numbers to the police. So what I did was to just put police on my phone, and then I put all the numbers there. So if I go to police on my phone, I can pull up all the emergency numbers to the police. Let me share that with you as well. They've got three numbers, 191, 191 to the police, or 18555, which Roland knows by heart. And then the other number is 0302. 773906. Oh, that's for crap. 0302, yeah. 773906. So task me. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to check out the regional numbers and then we will share it in the form of a table on the AM show tomorrow. Now, yeah, true. introduce your conversation. All right. So we had a uh, conversation <laughs> with the deputy director uh, for public relations, Ghana National Fire Service. And um, why do you want to make him a deputy? Well, Prince, he told me, Prince. <laughs> Billy Anaglati. You see it in the intro. Let's head to the disaster side by the president, Nanado Danque Kufado. A lot more questions than answers have been asked and have been sought. Well, we're here to speak to the deputy director for public relations, the Ghana National Fire Service, Prince Billy Anaglati. 
to ask him some critical questions about how the service is ongoing with these investigations, but more so how we can prevent a recurrence of such disasters. And I have him here with me. Good morning to you, sir. Yeah, good morning. Mm. And uh, I know that you've been speaking variedly on various media and other platforms on the subject, but um, the first response of the fire service was what? Well, that we got there six minutes. Um, when we had the call, that was um, 1918 hours that evening. Uh, quickly, we dispatched six fire engines to the scene. But the first one from Medina Fire Station got there in six minutes. When it got there, looking at the intensity, of, was how they asked for additional fire tenders, and three more tenders were deployed to assist. So we had nine fire engines on the ground. But ultimately, the, the objective was always to make sure that you are in readiness and preparedness. Would you say that was readiness and preparedness enough? Of course, we, we, we were actually ready. Um, having one single call to deploy six tenders, then really you, you, were, you were just even over ready to ensure that when you get them, and then you do not even need that much of a tender to handle the situation that quickly uh, that will even assist you in whatever you do. Had you not been there, we, we deployed the system, there's that got in a good time. I think the situation will have turned out to be a disaster, really, we should be talking about now. In your line of work, do you think, based on your, your experiences and the best practices from elsewhere, perhaps we better facilities could equip your emergency responders to better respond to such situations? I should be frank here by saying that what we did, we were much of exposing ourselves as firefighters to uh, the risk and dangers that were associated with fighting gas fires. Actually, if we were to have a helicopter, that would have been the best uh, appliance to fight that fire when um, there could be an explosion anytime during the firefighting. When the first explosion uh, occurred and then we got there, two other explosions occurred. That's how a fireman, as we are talking, is still at the hospital. He was injured out of that second explosion and the third one also came. So if we were to have a helicopter that we can fight this fire and above, not to get close to it, to expose ourselves to it, I think that would have been more efficient and effective um, in our uh, firefighting uh, at that place than we did. So you think that perhaps if you had an aircraft, it would have been better, like the way they used to fire, um, fight the fires in California, Australia, and elsewhere. Uh, but how, how usually is that approach? Does it mean that it's a fire service that has to acquire it or government has to acquire it? Well, it's a government. We are always, you know, um, on government support and anything that we, we need. Um, modern firefighting now does not necessarily need this physical firefighting that we are having for now. People are having rockets that they shoot into the fire from a distance. They have all sort of modern firefighting gadgets in terms of even their personal protective equipment that you need to fight fire with. But yes, as much as we do not have all those modern firefighting gadgets, that is not to say that the equipment that we have, we shouldn't maximize it. We always try to maximize it and ensure that we, we, we perform to the expectation of the public. At the end of the day, the, the blame is always on the emergency disaster response. Um, would you say this one, the response was better, ultimately from all the stakeholder institutions? Yes, um, I think it is also the improved, you know, uh, type of the response that everybody saw. That the moment the incident occurred, the fire service had the information that we got there in a good time. The police were there also to assist, and Nadmo has also come in a good time also to assist um, in handling this situation. Gas explosion fires are fires that can easily escalate from the point of origin to other areas. But you can imagine, and you have seen it yourself, we're able to confine the fire from even moving to the next uh, petrol filling station, though it has affected it in, in, in to a certain extent. But that petrol filling station could have also been destroyed in this fire. But we will quickly manage it and ensure that the fires on it are prevented and then to also prevent a spread of the fire. At that point in time, when you came in, what did you do by making sure that, well, those who would be on Lucas passers by knowing our social cultural setting not come close to the incident site? Yes, um, that is what I mentioned the police. The police quickly, when they got there, that was exactly what they were doing to prevent people. Um, it was uh, of a hectic 
time for the police as well because the number was so large that they were also pushing their way until the second explosion came when some of them uh, became uh, you know casualties um, in trying to to uh, catch a glimpse of what exactly he was doing that we saw that most of them has now drawn back. But even that, others were still coming in. So the police and the Madmo, they did well by, uh, you know, uh, holding the people at back for us to continue with our firefighting. When we are fighting fire and the public troop to the, the, the fire zone, it is one of the most difficult uh, way of fighting fires you will be fighting and you know, you'll be thinking of protecting those that other people that are trying to interfere in what we are doing so really we we commend the police and not more for trying to hold the people are back for us to work ultimately the objective is to make sure we don't consistently record some of these fires why do we in a spate of short periods seem to be recording these these disasters um, I keep saying that these disasters could have been prevented if everybody is committed to ensuring fire safety. If you look at the trend in these um, gas explosions, you realize these things occurred during um, offloading of a gas. All this one that we had on gas uh, filling station, it, it occurs at the period of offloading loading a gas. So what goes wrong during the offloading? There are several safety measures you need to put in place before you start offloading a gas. You need to, first of all, uh, comb the whole area, the vicinity of where your gas filling station is to determine if there is no source of heat or fire. If you are satisfied that there is none, then you need to come now to ensure that you put in other safety measures by turning off all electrical gadgets that are within the vicinity, turning off phones, nobody should use the phone at the time that you have, ensuring that you airtight all your, your, your couples, the co couplings that you are going to use to, to discharge it. You ensure that there shouldn't be any leakage on the hose that you are going to do that. You make sure that um, anybody that is there with you should also be somebody who have the technicalities in ensuring that you can offload it. No metal should be dragged on the, on the floor. No metal should be dropped. And these are some of the safety measures you need to put in place, but ensuring that you even put fire extinguisher close by you. But it appears some of these things have not been met. That is why we keep saying that. The, the requirement of the owners of gas filling station to uh, make available the attendants, the taxi drivers, and their means to fire service to train, we realize some of the filling station owners are not meeting that requirement. Um, we train some of their workers, and when they again engage the services of others, they don't make those people available. So they do not have what it takes to even know that their own activities on the, 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 the premises um, can also be a good recipe for fire outbreak. And that is why they, they do anything anyhow that has largely caused some of these preventable fires. The daily checks and supervision, after you have done the training, who sh ideally should be doing that? The fire service has a routine um, checks on these gas filling stations. That is yearly we need to get in there and assess uh, their facilities to determine they are meeting the standard before we renew their fire certificate. And apart from that, we also try to uh, have our snap checks. The snap checks that we do is the, to check on them unannounced. As we snap check them and we, we don't even announce it, we are able to determine and know that whether they are, you know, up and doing in terms of fire safety or not. That was how even last year, November, on our snap check, some gas filling station was immediately closed down for failure to meet the standard. I see. So it means that you do the snap checks, but every day who does the supervision at the, the place? That is why it is also by a requirement that they should have a fire safety officer on the ground. They are own fire, they need to employ a fire safety officer, not a fire... fire uh, but very often we find that they are not employing, they have not employed such people. Well, many a time when we get to the premises to inquire, they said yes, somebody is shown to be responsible for the, for the daily routine check on the gas filling station and that they claim those people are the fire safety officers.
I don't know what is beyond the fire service and within your domain or purview, but we're just even getting a quote from the Deputy Minister of Information, who is saying that ultimately we have about 400 of these fuel stations located within residences. Is that a worry? And how come we are where we are? Well, um, yes, I do not have the numbers, actually. But it should be a worried situation to us if, indeed, people are not disciplined. Because all these fires that occurred, as I stated, is all about indiscipline. The reckless will that the, the gas attendants go about their duties. So if we are not disciplined, then it should be a worried situation to all of us. Because people are supposed to be disciplined and follow the safety measures to prevent the fires in the first place. So if we are not being disciplined and all these fires that have occurred are related to recklessness, then we should be worried. So what should we be doing about them going forward? Uh, I, I know that it may go beyond the Ghana National Fire Service, but where should we start from? Well, the fire service also has a role to play. What we are saying is um, for us to ensure total safety on these gas filling stations, we are talking about the uh, training of the attendants, uh, the, the tanker drivers and their mates. Generally, when we train these people, we give a, a fire certificate, certificate of an, a, a training to the station. But we think that who is not uh, giving us the, the, the opportunity to cross-check who has been trained, who has not been trained. Now, what we intend doing is to give individual um, cert certificates that when we get there on our snap check and any other thing, we should be able to determine by anybody having the certificate. We can show that, yes, I have received the training. Then we can use that one to monitor. We also insist that any time any gas filling station would have to offload the gas, they need to inform the local fire station within the community that will have to get in there and give them a fire cover. By so doing, we will enforce the people also to meet the safety standard before even offloading. And we are believing that we will also insist on the training and ensuring all these measures being put in place with fire service being available before offloading and all that, we would go a long way to reduce um, this uh, preventable disasters that we have. What about do the domestic setups? What happens there? Yes, if you look at our statistics, uh, the domestic um, fires uh, at number or other fires. So what we also have been doing initially was to be educating people and I'd be appealing to them as to what to do to prevent fires, you know, in, in their homes. But now since um, November last year. We have amended our LI 1724 fire precaution premises regulation. Actually, this uh, LI has no enforcement on domestic fires. So with the amendment that we have of LI 2249, has extended the enforcement to domestic homes. So now we are going to ensure that our domestic or residential homes also have a fire certificate. We will get into those premises, have a risk assessment, determine the type of risk, high, medium, or low, that will prescribe or recommend facilities that they need to ensure that they have them in the home. That will go a long way to reduce uh, domestic fire. You are talking about extinguishers. Would, yeah. they, would, would they be compelling? Would, would they be mandatory for people to have? Because in Ghana, we know our mindset. It is because the law was not there previously, so we're not enforcing it. That is why when you look at, you compare um, industrial fires to that of domestic fires, the, the, the difference is so huge that the domestic fires always, you know, uh, uh, outnumber those ones, just because we're not enforcing that uh, uh, law. But now that we have a law that has extended it, 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 it is obligatory for people to have adequate firefighting facilities like extinguishers. They should have early detection and warning system like, like uh, smoke detectors. They should have adequate exits. That is not what we have in our, in our homes now. The, we build um, without ensuring that we have adequate exits. That in case the main entrance is blocked, we should be able to use an alternative exit to get out of the premises. All these things will come um, to play when we begin to enforce the LI 2249. Well, thank you very much, and thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you for the opportunity given. Okay. So we've been speaking to a deputy director for public relations, the Ghana National Fire Service, Prince Billy Anaglate, had been speaking to us about the effort of the Ghana National Fire Service in the wake of the disaster 
that was recorded at the Atomic Junction area here in Accra. Well, we hope that um, we can have a lot more interactivity on this subject going forward, but we have to go back to the studio.